welcome to the isaac series how are we doing today how are you doing how are you guys doing what's happening how's your week been okay so this week i learned a very very valuable lesson um i actually learned that they are interestingly there is i mean there is more money chasing good ideas than they are good ideas you know meaning that there's a lot more money than we think is available you know a lot more money than you, than you think is available is actually available looking for the right ideas okay so welcome to the um isaac series today uh, it's good to have you guys here welcome machi welcome um Hagas awesome um i'm gonna be bringing you in shortly but i need to do this very very important introduction uh because i consider today very very good yeah good 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 hi machi that's ng welcome 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 guys welcome officious oop awesome name nice to have you here nice to have you here nice to have you guys here okay so today is gonna be very interesting um today we're gonna be talking about something that a lot of people actually fear um we're gonna be talking about something a lot of people actually dread okay and that thing is called starting out on your own striking out on your own however you choose to call it but it's basically hello hr expert lady nice to have you here i'm waving right back at you guys uh so good to have you here so good to have you here we're gonna have an interesting time today um learning from someone who left a high paying job to start a business you know she left uncertainty I mean, she left certainty, you know, into seemingly uncertainty, uncertain situation, you know, and um, eventually she was able to actually make something fantastic, amazing out of it, you know. Um, but before then, I was talking about the fact that there is actually more money than we all think is available, you know. You just need that right idea, you know, and money will actually come rushing at you as long as you have the right idea. And you're able to communicate it appropriately you're able to go about it you know appropriately you know and there are ways to doing these these things you know so and that's uh, one of the things we will be learning from um our guests today all right so our guest today is no other person than olue bube aka you know um olue bube aka um, um yes she she is a friend of mine but she's someone that i also respect um so much because of our passion for what she does you know she's a very simple lady but she's very dogged and passionate you know so i'm gonna go through her profile before i bring her in officially good so um it will be Haka is a distinct agropreneur with over nine years of management and leadership experience working in the consulting financial services and manufacturing industries um she is currently the ceo and founder of agas awesome foods um, a health-focused company that creates 100% natural beverage and seasoning powders from nutrient-dense nutrient crops, you know, grown across Africa. Um, proud to founding Agas Awesome Foods, um, Olive will be worked as a manager in KPMG, you know. Uh, if you don't know, KPMG is one of the, one of the top multinationals in, I mean, one of the, uh, they call them top, for you know the best for in their industry you know she was manager at kpmg providing audits and assurance services to clients in the financial services industry um she leverages her seven years plus experience with the uh big four experience you know to run the company effectively in her role as the ceo of agas awesome she provides leadership for the daily activities of the company ensuring that practices align with the overall vision and revenue targets of the company um, she's also a certified food safety expert. Um, Olubi was one of the top 20 incubators in the 2020 Orange Corners Nigeria Incubation Program organized by the Kingdom of the Netherlands in collaboration with Faith Foundation. She was also second runner-up in the 2019 Assessing Grant for Startups, um, that's AGS Tribe Enterprise Challenge. Um, she holds a bachelor's degree in accounting from the University of Nigeria and Tsuka. She's also um, an associate of the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria. You know, um, um, she's married with three ch um, kids and currently lives in Lagos, Nigeria. So um, that is our guest today. I'll be bringing her in shortly. Um, I hope she's here and I hope she's able to join um, as soon as possible. Yes. So we'll be, she'll be talking to us today about um, how she started Agas Awesome Foods. 
Um, and of course, the reason why I wanted her to share a story, you know, why I think it's really important is because a lot of people also find it hard to actually strike out so just because uh, they think that, oh, uh, they are stuck in a great job, you know, they may not be able to make as much money from a startup business, you know, which is not true. You know, as long as God is calling you to come out of that, you know, job, of course, not everybody, you know, and I also need to say this, not everybody will be an entrepreneur, but if God's calling you out or you feel passionate, you know, mm -hmm. to strike out, you know, irrespective of how lucrative the job is, as long as you're able to do it wisely, you know, it is actually very possible. It is very possible because there is actually more money, you know, chasing good ideas than there are good ideas, you know. So if you have a good idea, it's time to strike out as long as... Um, you feel very compelled to do that. All right, so we will be waiting for um, it will be to join us. Okay, great. Um, it will be here. So let me bring her right in. Um, okay. Uh, in a minute. Hello, guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, amazing, amazing. We finally have this. Hello. It will be. Hi, Isaac. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. How you doing? Good evening. Good evening. I'm good fine, evening. thank you. Good evening. Just How a quick correction. Doing? My name is Olwe Bube, not Olwe Bube. Okay. <laughs> See, <I> have... <laughs> you are calling it the Yoruba way. <laughs> I have that in the Yoruba version, exactly. That's the Yoruba version I just dashed in today, you know. Olwe <laughs> Bube, okay. Olwe Bube, yeah. yeah. So, um, at the core, of course, I'm a Yoruba boy, but then, you know, uh, we will do both together. Intermittent, no, yeah, it's as, fine. As people, been, always, people always call you like that. Been, <laughs> what's interesting, I've always called you that anyway. Yeah, welcome to the show. Uh, it's good to have you here today. Um, and it's good to have you share your amazing story. Uh, I feel that, I feel personally, you know, I may be wrong, but I feel, I feel like, um, I feel like maybe even you do not have an idea what you're sitting on in terms of your business because I think that you're doing one of the most important, uh, you're running one of the most important businesses, you know, of our time in terms of preserving people's health, in terms of um, enhancing people's lives. You know, it's one thing to sell um, agri products or food products. It's another thing to sell one that actually helps people live longer. You know, so for me, it's beyond a business. It's actually about preserving lives, about impacting lives. You know, so thank you for all that you do. And welcome to the Isaac series. Once again. Thanks. Thank you for agreeing to do thank this. Thank you. All right. So let's go straight in. Um, to start with, of course, I'm gonna be asking you a couple of questions. Um, for the especially for the benefit of um our audience, um, and more importantly, those who um, are currently in the show that you were in when you launched out, you know. So I want you to take us, I, I'd like to take you back to that uh, um, that phase of your life, yes. Um, you, 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 you were working um, with uh, KPMG, you know. Um, uh, interestingly, my wife's an accountant, you know, and I have a couple of accountant friends. I look at our best friends with an accountant, you know. So um, I know how important that work is and how, to an extent, prestigious it is, you know. So, um, and, then, and then you 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 were in that space and then you left to start something of your own. So um, if you could think back to that period, that uh, moment in time, what led, what, what really happened, what culminated in your decision to leave? Um, um, was it that um, you were having a hard time at work or you just wanted to do something different uh, or you've had it in plan to uh, work for a particular period of time and then launch out? So what happened? Why did you leave KPMG to start something? And did you intend to actually start something? What led to all of that um, discovery? Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Can I can hear, hear you very clearly. Very, very okay. clearly. Very okay, so clear. I'll have to start my story from the beginning. <laughs> right from <laughs> okay, when I joined KPMG. I joined KPMG in 2010. And um, can you hear me? Because it's... I can hear you clearly. Very clearly. I can hear you. it's not really easy to get into KPMG. 
because of this very yeah. stringent recruitment process. So I was really excited when I got the job. So I was there from 2010, September 2010 till December yeah. 2017. And um, mm-hmm. it, was, it was a great time that I had um, there. So um, I got married in um, September 2013. And then okay. I had my first child in October 2015. So um, during that pregnancy period, I added 30 kgs of um, mm. weight. So in the process of trying to lose weight, that was when I came across um, Healthy Living. And I, I did a lot of research, wrote a lot of fitness coaches, and then I fell in love with the Healthy Living lifestyle. So beyond weight loss for... Um, for me, it became like something I became passionate about. So after my um, first baby, because I had put in too much effort, I lost five kgs in a period. So seven months I to get my body back. I used to do hard I can barely hear you now. I can barely hear you now. Ouch. Oh, my. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? I can't hear you again. Hello, guys. Can you hear her? Please comment if you can hear her. Can you hear me um, now? Okay, I can hear you now. Good. You're back now. Okay, please. Why did you stop? Let me continue. Um, you stopped at the point where you said you had gotten married, you were hard in weight, and then that was where you came in contact with LD living um, food and products. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Please, if you can't hear, at any point you can't hear me, just let me know. Can you hear me? Because some people are I can hear you. Can hear I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I fell in love with the healthy living um, style, and then I, I lost about um, 25 kgs in a wow. period of six months. So um, wow. by the seventh month, I was like, okay, it's like I'm trying, I'm getting my body back. I, I was ready to really just, um, I was getting the hang of the motherhood thing. And the last yeah. thing in my mind was, getting pregnant because I, I, when I was, um, when my kids were like, I think when they were two or three months old, I had gone for, um, to do a birth control procedure. That's the IU, the IUCD procedure. Yeah. So, yeah. um, when, when my baby was, my first baby was seven months old, I then discovered that I had missed my period. So I went to the wow. hospital and I was like, what's going on? Because I have birth control. What could have happened? And then I did the pregnancy test and they said I was pregnant. I was like, how is it possible that I'm pregnant? But I have an IUD in now. So that period, I was, I was, very, I was very depressed. So they did a scan and they said that it wasn't, so, it wasn't so viable and that we should come back in about two weeks to get to know the status of the pregnancy. So that two weeks period, I was just praying and hoping that it just, the pregnancy just goes somehow. I was even praying. Then my sister was, was trusting God for a baby. I was praying that God would just transfer the baby to her. <laughs> there was no prayer. I didn't pray that period. So when we now went back for, when I went back for this scan, they now checked and told me that there were two babies. I was like, what? <laughs> Wow. Okay, prior, prior to the scan, I had they had to remove the IU, IUD because I was already pregnant, and if it was there, it could um, cause some infection. first baby. Okay. Yes, so they now said I, I was going to have two babies. I'm not like, so me, I'm here crying that, <laughs> crying that I'm pregnant for one, and then they're they saying it's two. At the point when they said I was going to have twins, I just started laughing because what are the odds that my IUD will shift and... I will not get pregnant with twins. It's the only yeah. twins we have in my family is my my dad. My dad and his twin died at birth. That was the only twin history that we have. So mm. I just I just at that point I just knew that uh, this just has to be uh, this just had to be good because there is no way mm-hmm. that my IUCD will shift and just like that I'm having twins. 
So, yeah. so um, I had my twins in January 2017, and um, I resumed work. I resumed. I went went on maternity leave, resumed work, and all that. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I had like um, three children. On the my first baby was just 15 months when I had the twins. So I had three children on the on the two years, and then with my job and all. So um, in I gave it to them in in january i think in may or so in may i went for um okay during this pregnancy period i think another reason why i was worried was that it was going to affect my it was going to affect my career because that year was the year i was supposed to make manager so seeing that i i was pregnant and all i tried to get a job during that period because i tried to get a less stressful job. job Yes, during that period, mm-hmm. I, was pre- I, I tried to get a less stressful job. But at the point when I was going to finalize with them was when I now discovered that I was pregnant. I had to tell them, and then they gave me some funny conditions that they weren't going to pay me when I go on maternity leave. And all. So I said, I beg, it doesn't make sense. Let me just stay where I am, where I'm even sure of the work, work mm-hmm. conditions. So mm-hmm. it had been on my mind for a while to like start something of my own. But you know the fear of living leaving my career yeah. because at at that point I was any I was any more than my husband. So we we, mm. we usually put resources together to run the house. So so that yeah. point leaving to start something of my own was like are you sure this thing is right? <laughs> are you sure it's mm. something I'm supposed to do? So when I went for um I made I, I eventually made manager even with my um the pregnancy and I I went to manager school in May 2017. I went okay. to manager school. And then when you go to manager school, the, 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 you, do, the, you do several tests to find out your personality, find out if you are the kind of person that will stay and all. And then you mm. just get exposed to the firm and all they require from you as a manager. So it was yeah. during manager school that I just, I just made, my mind, made up my mind that, well, I'll start a business and I'll see how it goes. I'll start a business and see what mm. happens along the way. So in the, it was there that I, I created the um, Instagram page and I just put comments soon. That was in May 2017 on, on, the, on this Instagram page. So, um, what was coming the name back, of the handle you created? What was the name of the handle you created? It's still Agas Wholesome. It's the same handle, okay. Agas Wholesome. Yes, yes. So, how, did you know um, be, how did you know it was going to be Agas Wholesome? Did you have, okay, did you have I, a concept for that? Before then? Mm, I had been thinking about. I, I had discussed discussed with my husband and my mom. Then my mom, my mom, my mom's name is Agatha. So Agas Osom is from Agas, and Agas Osom is from her name. So <laughs> that's okay. just the stuff. So I had discussed with them, and I told them I wanted to start a healthy food a business that sells healthy food and what okay. we like to call it. So I had decided on the name before going. I was like, okay, wholesome. Wholesome means healthy food, whole foods, and all. So I just joined Agas Osom and out there so um in in um after i came back from manager school i started the business so i started with um we started selling um acha tiger nuts baobab um yeah. that's what we started yeah. with and i i i also sold to people in my office it, it was something i was doing as a side hustle because my job was very busy so i may post yeah. you just once a week on the page and all but I was sure getting few responses, especially from people in my office. So, um, towards um, towards September 2017, that um, that feeling of of um, leaving was really heavy on my mind. I've been thinking about mm-hmm. it and talking to people, talking to people, weighing the options and all, because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't a difficult decision because nobody knows what if I leave and. My business doesn't do well. What if I leave and I'm not able to find something good if my business doesn't do well? There were so many uncertainties. But then the yeah. only thing I was sure of was that, okay, at this point in my life, I just felt like my time in KPMG was over. I, I wasn't having any I wasn't having any issues at work. I was a good staff. Some of my colleagues, ex-colleagues are here. <laughs> I wasn't having any issues at work. I, I, I didn't miss any promotion. I got promoted every year up until... Even despite your presence, your children, yes. yeah. 
Yes, I got promoted because you move up the ranks every year. So I got promoted. I didn't miss any promotion for each of the levels. And um, okay. my, my, I, at least the, my superiors liked me and all. But I just knew within me that it was time to leave. <laughs> my husband just joined. <laughs> 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 I just Hello, knew within me. Thanks for joining. Okay. <laughs> I just knew within me that it was time to leave, but <laughs> they, um, but it wasn't easy. And the most difficult part, talking about my husband, was convincing my husband because mm. leaving meant that all the financial burden would be on his head. That's what it means. And it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't really easy because we had three young children. Three young children. You have to buy diapers. You have to buy food. Wow. And all. So it wasn't mm. it wasn't very easy. But then I spoke to people. There was um, I spoke to I reached out to one of who I reached out to was Temitope Olabegi. I don't know if you know her. Yeah, Temitope very well. Um, she and said, she said, she said. yeah, she said that um, God grants God grants the desires of our hearts, and He's the one that puts the desires there. That mm. if I feel that is what God is calling me to, I should. You met that before you resigned, right? That was before yes, you resigned. Before I resigned. Yeah. Yeah, okay. before I resign, I should right. I should weigh my options. I should pray about it and be sure before I make the move. But I need to hear from God first. So I kept I kept praying. I even sent an email to Omilola, Omilola Oshikoya, because I had attended Do It Afraid conference like two times before I finally left. And seeing entrepreneurs that made that decision and all also encouraged me. So I spoke to Omilola. Spoke to um, Timmy Toby Olabegi. I was. I also spoke to um, Auntie Made of Green and Grill House. So yeah, and um, all they said was, you know what's on your mind and all. Just be sure that you are sure what you are doing. But if you feel that is what you are doing, that is what God is calling you to do. Then maybe you should just make the move. So inside me, I was sure. Like like there was this. Mm-hmm. There was just this feeling that it will be. It's time to go. Your time here is up. I just. It's not. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say oh, God came down from heaven. I said it will be. <laughs> no, but we appear to be in a dream. Oh my. Okay. I can hear you now. You're back. Good. Continue, please. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I just had this knowing inside me that it was time to go, but then I was too scared. I had I drafted my resignation letter several times, and you have to wow. go and see the partner and, <laughs> and let him know that you are leaving. And just the courage to go. Ha! Ah, I was too scared. But before I even got to the point of drafting that letter, I spoke to my, I discussed with my husband and. The a very important thing for me was I needed to get his approval before yeah. I could resign, and yeah. it wasn't easy for him to give that approval because even so, if so, you are the so, one. So, so tell me about I mean tell me about I mean convincing him. Was it um, how long did that take? You know, um, was it uh, was it I mean was it very difficult? And um, at what point did he finally agree? And why did he agree? Yeah, so so we had been talking about it for a while and. He, I, I think at a point he just got tired and then I had to write him because most times when we talk about it at the end of the day we just end up quarreling <laughs> we just yeah. have an argument and quarrel so I had to write him a long email excuse me mm-hmm. I wrote him a long email and I said okay these are the reasons why I want to leave this 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 and if, if maybe by the third month my business doesn't do well I would look for a job so for him, he, mm. he, he I, I wrote a long email to outline all the points, what I felt that well, that was what God was calling me to do. I also let him know that if I put in the effort I put in in my work, in my business, there's no way yeah. it won't go. Because I had started the ju- business in July, and even with my yeah. inconsistency and all, because I was doing it as a side hustle, I was still making like up to 100K in a month with my wow. inconsistency and all. So I was still being, uh, selling up to 100K anymore. So I was like, so okay, just imagine if I put in all the effort I'm putting in my KPMG work in this business, why will it not grow? Especially as I'm, mm-hmm. I have that feeling in my mind that that's also what um, God wanted me to do. So after mm-hmm. I sent him that very long email and he just said, okay, approved. We now, wow. I, now, I now had to go to my partner 
and I had also discussed with some a partner that I was close close to before I went to meet um, the other partner and yeah. resign. So when you resign in my office, you do you have to do a three months um, notice period so that you can wrap up all your because we do major jobs that might not be easy to hand over. Yes. Yeah. So I finally left in December 2017. That was when I finally Amazing. left. Amazing. So I was starting January as a as a as an entrepreneur. So yeah, so January 2018 I started and honestly it wasn't easy because my kids were one year, one year, they were just one year old and they were still at home. So running a business from home, I was doing everything and then I had to also still keep my eyes on them. It wasn't it wasn't easy mm-hmm. and then from time to time my husband would send me a job job offer. See this job offer. Try it. <laughs> See this job offer. Try it now. Some of them I tried. Some of some of them I just reluctantly went. But inside me I knew that I'm not looking for another job. <laughs> I know that this thing is going to take time, but I know that eventually God will help us. So as God will help it, my husband's um side hustle also started doing very well and um let me say we didn't really feel the impact so much of my not bringing in an income before before um before i left i used to have two domestic staff but after i left we had to just downsize to one person since i was now at home so i i i was working on my business till um june 2018 i was the only one doing everything then we had not started mixes. I was still selling just Acha, Baobab, Tiger Nuts, Kilishi. Then I was selling yeah. single spices like garlic, ginger, just the single, single spices and all. By yeah. June 2018, I um, hired my first staff. She also resumed in my house. She resumed okay. in my house in June 2018. And we continued selling. But then I realized that um, people were looking for ready to use products that were ready to use like okay if you if you buy ginger you buy garlic you buy turmeric they will still come back yeah. and say okay how do i combine this thing so i can um, use it to cook jollof rice or yeah. how do i combine this thing so i can use it to cook um see my sister <laughs> how do i combine this thing so i can use it to cook jollof rice or how do i combine this thing so i can use it to cook um soup and all so i i just noticed that the markets they were looking for products that were ready to use and a lot of people were also looking for healthy alternatives to their regular meal, regular milk, yeah. regular sugar and all. So um we 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 introduced our beverage powders in August. Okay, let, let me let me quickly cut you there, right. Okay. So okay. so you so you left you finally left, you got your husband's approval uh out yes. uh, you know and then you got um you got to talk to people. So um so yeah. you didn't just leave without getting some level of assurance so first you were assured in your spirit that this was the right decision for you to take you know yes. and then secondly you spoke with people you spoke with your husband and you got to a large extent good um some good level of approval across board before you left good so yes. after you left you had to start um your business from your home you know from the house yes. right um yes. and then um it took a while before you started getting to see um other needs um other value chain within that business and you started launching it so did you go for any training and what would you say prepared you to run that kind of business and to see those kind of opportunities around that exact um business and its value chains yeah okay um i i didn't really at the beginning i didn't really go for any training um naturally a creative person so i know how to i have this gift of knowing how to put things together okay before i got through some i my, i was making jewelry that was every, most people that know me from way back they know that i i was making jewelry so i have the gift of putting different things together to come up with one um product so yeah. that's um and then i i think that the training i got from um from kpmg is what like really helped me to really sit down, plan, mm. strategize, and and um, just focus on building, on building my business, and knowing that it's 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 a gradual, it's a gradual process. 
Okay. Yes. So now, when you started out, um, how, I mean, would you say, um, I mean, did you get to some points where you thought, okay, maybe I shouldn't have resigned, you know? And um, when those thoughts came, what did you do? That's one. I'll just put these two questions in one. Okay. And secondly, um, um, what was growth like for you after you started fully, you know, from January that following year? You know, how did you progressively grow, you know? And um, yeah, what would you say helped you to grow? Okay. Um. So your first question again, please. Okay. So first, um, first question I asked was about. Um, I think I, I think I was asking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was asking that um, when you finally left. Yes. When you yeah when when you finally left um K P K P M G, what were the what were the what were the things you said? What were the things? What would you say were the things you learned that basically helped your business? Yeah, let me let me rephrase it that way. You know, that's that's one. And of course, how would you say? How would okay, you, you said your that there was a, Yeah, you said that. Have I ever? There was any time I I thought of going back? Not, right. Exactly. I, I thought you regretted that, that decision. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there are, there are, there were many times that I I was like, hmm, are you sure I should have left this job? Because on a normal day. I like to have my own money. <laughs> Can you hear me? Mm, I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so just I like to know. have my I like to have my own money, but leaving a job means that even though I have my mm. even though I have my own leaving a job means that even though I have my own um money, it was limited and then I needed to still put in some to support the house. I needed to even so since since I wasn't really bringing in major income. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Yeah, good. Yeah. I since, I wasn't, yeah, since, I was, I, since I wasn't really bringing in major income, I had to yeah. like streamline my 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 spending to just things that were absolutely necessary. So I can't really see any dress or hair that I like and buy it. <laughs> I had to just, you know, because I when I started the business, I was paying myself um 20k per month. That was my salary. Wow. 20k wow. per month when we started. And then every other thing that we made apart from that 20k I took out, I put it back. Everything that we made, mm -hmm. I put it back. Just take out, take out that twenty k, and I know that okay, this twenty k is my own money. And then, um, since my husband was providing for the house, I can just manage this one and see what. So I, there are many times that okay, when you drop a budget, you now go for approval, <laughs> and then they not say what. So what this one? Like, what kind of rubbish is this now? And if I was still working now, will you be asking me all these questions? So there were yeah. many times like that, but I just, I, I, even though th that those times came, I just told myself that it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of mm -hmm. time. The, the, um, the, the exercise of visualizing, having that vision of okay, this is where I want to be. This is where I'm going to be in the very near future, was also what um, helped me. Just, it's just a matter of time. Shelly, um is to grow this business, grow our revenues. It will happen. It's just a matter of time. So, okay, yeah, there are so many times like that. Then your so second your, question. Yeah. I can't remember the second question. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Let me go to the next question, basically, because I think this is actually more important right now. So I can see um, your husband making some really valid statements in the comment section that... Um, um, one of the reasons why it was quite reluctant also was because you were going into an unknown terrain. And to be candid, the business you do is not a very popular business, you know. Uh, and and that's the next question I was I, I'm gonna ask you because um, as much as it's um, I consider I personally consider it a very pertinent business because um, it's not like missed. I mean, okay, let me not mention it, a brand name, right? But it's not like, um, it's not like um, fries, you know, or those um, real size stuff that you just eat and it makes you fat or makes, you know, these are healthy products you're selling, right? So what gave you the assurance that this was going to succeed? You know, what gave you that assurance? Yeah. Of course, people start, people start bakery businesses, it thrives very easily, very fast. Start pure water businesses, you know, they start even um, cream, you know, all sort of stuff. But this was you trying to go into something that was not popular. You understand? Yeah. You know, people would normally naturally buy meat by, you know, um, you know, yogurt and stuff like that. But you wanted to do something 
um, that people need, you know, however, that people really normally would not want to buy. You understand? So, so what give you that assurance? Yes. You know, how has the experience been in terms of growth, majorly? Okay. Um, so um, there are so many um, during my um, journey into the healthy lifestyle, and I also grew up in. I grew up in Joss. I grew up in okay. Joss. I left when I was going for university, and that was how I got to. I grew up eating foods like acha. And then when I came to Lagos, I realized that so many people in Lagos they don't even know what Acha is. Meanwhile, there are companies, there are companies abroad that all they sell is Acha. They will yeah. come and take it from here and sell it there. And then I I went through their Instagram their, um, websites, even um, um, superfoods like Baobab. There are companies that all they sell is Baobab abroad. And I saw that this thing actually has um is actually very nutritious. It has a lot of um, value. It's just that we don't really know what it is. We don't even know what it is here. Even with that we were eating the archa in just then we didn't even know that ah, this food is actually really nutritious. And then in the you know the healthy living trend. People are really trying to eat healthy and um switch to the healthy lifestyle because of Nowadays, the rising yes. Yeah, because of the rising um non communicable diseases and all. People yeah. are just trying to go preventive by eating healthy. So I felt ah. that if we if we educate people of okay, this is archa, this is what you can use it for. This these are the nutrients. If we educate people of the nutrients in these foods, how they can use it for their kids and all, it will sell because if these companies are rather coming to take it from here to sell, then it means it has um it really has value. So that was yeah. one of the reasons why I chose to and then there were not so many people doing doing it here then. Yeah. There were not so many people selling archa in Lagos selling baobab in Lagos then. So I felt like oh, it was actually like a blue ocean that a lot of people were not really, really um, taking advantage of. So it was, I didn't want to do something that everybody was doing. So that okay. was one of the reasons why. So, I so how, how would you describe um, how the business was received? Would you say um, you were pleased, you know, in terms of um, patronage, especially when you started out, basically? Can you talk about that? Yeah, but like when I started out, every business has its phase. I wouldn't say, oh, people were rushing me with others, but at least yeah. we were, our, our revenue was growing consistently. If we make 100K wow. this month, next, next month we'll make like 150, next time we'll make like 200. So it, wow. was growing, it, was, it wasn't like we were, we were making millions from day one. No, we, we, our revenues were growing consistently and we had to keep educating people because the nature of what what I what we do, we have to keep educating people because on a normal day they don't know what these products are. We have to keep educating. We had to give free samples. We had to yeah. um, sponsor like nutrition programs, sponsor them samples of our products, give people to try and all look for communities that have our target market and see how we can send our products across for them to try. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like, oh, people rushed us with others, but there was growth. Like every month we were, we were making progress. We were, in, um, we were grew, our revenues were growing consistently every month. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So, um, um, but over the years, of course, um, the little I know about others also, of course, you, you are a very, very profitable business, if I may say so myself. Hmm, I didn't um, send my um, bank account. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know one to, or two things. I wanted to also talk about um when we so when we, we so our business was growing but the growth became it be, it became faster when we started doing our own mixes. So anybody can go and source a char, source baobab and sell. But then we started uh, making our beverage powder. So this idea came to my head that, oh, okay, people are looking for natural alternatives to milo milk and all. Why yeah. don't you... Dates, dates is a natural sweetener and you, you yeah. have a sugar and powdered foam. So why don't you put cocoa and this together and it will taste like milo. And I just tried that. This actually tastes like milo. We need to mix mm. dates and blah, blah, blah. This thing, this thing maybe can replace milk because we we're also... Another thing we discovered that people that were coming to buy our products, we didn't set out to reach, to reach out to kids that were having allergies. But most people that were coming to buy our products had kids that had allergies. And mm. then they took it and, and they didn't have an, a reaction. So like, okay, this is a market that we can actually serve. 
Let's mm. see how we can put together beverage powders for them. And we sent out samples and we launched it. And people really bought into it. But they did choke the mm-hmm. powder, sugar, tiger nut milk. Because it, they couldn't mm-hmm. find it anywhere. You can't get that product anywhere but from Agas. It's something we created. Wow. So, yeah, so our sales really picked up with those um, beverage powders. And then in December, December 2018, that was when we started making seasoning powders, December 2018. So when mm. we introduced, introduced our seasoning powders to people also, uh, people were really excited. So the seasoning powders really also help, helped us to blow up sales. So it's also important to see how you can do things different, differently and create your own your own product that doesn't exist anywhere to also help you okay. to amazing okay so 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 um um you started in your house uh um now do you still operate from the house or you now have your office office space separate from the house no we moved out from the house last year um october 2019 so we were in the house for almost two years for almost yeah. two years so we moved out in october 2018 because there was no more there was no more space to keep our load <laughs> And then for Amazing. food safety purposes as well. And then we had also saved up to get to get this space. So we moved out in October 20, 2019. October 2019. Okay. okay, so and also... And then, and then I, I also want to... We were all... The thing is, all our mixes, all our mixes, we, we were doing them manually. So it's just mm-hmm. um, three months ago, we got a mixer. So all the mixes we've been doing for over two years, we're mixing mm. manually. So anybody that is waiting to have a mixer to start is not ready to start. Mm. <laughs> That's mm. Just... Mm. Okay. So basically, you regrew. I mean, um, um, and that says organic growth. Yeah, organic. I mean, talk about organic growth at its best. You know, Hi, so Adam. you grew, <laughs> you grew organically, and then yeah. you were able to move out. And then um, the last time I was at your out your office i see that you have um <laughs> you have <laughs> you have machineries now you have equipment you know you have heavy yeah. equipment you know how did that come to be how did you grow you know what's all these resources where did they come they all come from the business or you had investors you know or you had um, you poured more money in from somewhere or it was all organic growth no no for for our okay so after we paid rent our cash was low and then you have to put in money to buy raw materials to pay staff and all so yeah. our equipment the basic equipment we have our sealer our manual sealer our heat gun and all basic equipment we funded it but the major equipment um our mixer and then um, we have a mixer we have a sealing machine and all we got some grant funding so we got grant funding okay. from from AGS tribe, but that one we used it for Navdak, and because we we okay. also had to we also had to add some of our funds for Navdak because we put forward thirteen products for Navdak. It's not out yet. We are hoping to. How is that coming? Does it have well, a timeline? We are hoping that before the end of the year. We started in January and it's it's, it's quite slow because of um, COVID and COVID-19. the regular bureaucracy. So we are hoping that that will be done before the end of the year. So um, we some of our equipment, most of our major equipment, were f- funded by. Um, so we get we got five hundred k from um, from AGS tribe. We also got got some funding from. Um, Orange corners as well. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah. So besides organic growth, we applied for grant opportunities. Okay. Awesome. Now let's talk about the future. Um, Agas awesome. You know, you've 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 run a good race. I must um, personally say because of I mean even uh, being a distant observer of the business. You know, and now so far so good. Of course, I also saw some of your numbers and I was incredibly impressed. You know, we may not be able to see all of that here. However, so you've done a good job. You know, um, um, you know, left your work when you were inspired to. You know, um, followed um, some different principles to get to this point. You know, started um, small in your house, moved out to when you could afford it. You know, attracted funds, and then you're able to you're able to build up until this level. Now, what's the what was the future? Um, what was the next ten years 
look like for Agas Wilson? What are you looking to achieve in the next 10 years? Where do you see the company and what are your plans, basically? What are the plans you're, I mean, what are the things you're planning to put in place um, um, for the company, you know? And what exactly, if you were to close your eyes uh, and look into the future in 10 years, how do you see Agas Wilson? Okay, um, in the next 10 years, um, we we'll would be, we we'll would have a fully automated production facility. Like all the okay. equipment we need to auto automate our production processes, which will improve our efficiency, we would have that. Um, we would have also all the food certifications. Aside snapback, um, you need to get SON, you need to get, um, if you are intending to sell abroad, you also have to get um, like, like FDA approval and all to be able to sell your products in stores abroad so we would also have yeah. that so be, beyond also having our products in major stores in nigeria we yeah. see our products in um organic stores like whole foods markets we're going to mm. be on the shelves of whole foods markets so beyond the nigerian nigerian brand we see we see agas as a global a global brand that will be um well known for our natural and nutrient dense products we would also have provided employment for um let me see like 50 staff in the next 10 years we should have about 50 staff in our employment um as part of our staff and all that amazing okay so um now let's let's talk about um valuation um i know that um the last time the last time um I saw it, I was privileged, let me say privileged to see your numbers. Um, um, it was really, really um, quite interesting. So um, I'm going to talk about valuation in two terms. You know, what's, what's like your current um, valuation? And if you, um, if you had an offer, right, to be bought out right now, would you sell your company? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, let me start from the second question. Um, right now, no, I, I wouldn't sell. I wouldn't mm. sell right now because I don't think we are we are ripe for selling yet. Mm. I think that um, they are still we still we are still we still need to put I don't know we are, there, there's still a lot of value we need to put in together to yeah. get a good offer. But I I don't think it's it's the right time for us to sell yet. We are still building. We haven't gotten yeah. to this stage of selling. And then in terms of valuation, I've told you I'm not on valuation. <laughs> but I can talk about our revenue growth. That's what okay. I can talk about. So, um, okay. okay, okay. I don't like talking about my numbers though, but I'll just <laughs> talk about it. So in the first, um, in the first year, in 2018, we did um, 5 million in revenues in the first wow. full year in 2018. Amazing. So Amazing. in 2019, we tripled that number. Mm. And um, in 2020, hopefully, we should double 2019 numbers. So just do your math. Wow. <laughs> amazing. amazing. Wow. That's, that's, that's a lot of progress. That's, that's amazing. Okay. Okay. So um, um, let's talk about um, the... The professional parts of your business, the the practical part of your business, right? How exactly do you produce? You know, what's the process like from from sourcing your materials, you know, to putting them together to production and into sales? You know, can you briefly take us through it? How you how, how you make it happen, basically? Okay, okay. So we um we have part um we most of our raw materials are gotten from Joss. So we have partners, um, farmer partners that we work with that grow. We partner them with them to grow. So because we're also particular about how the products are grown. So yeah. we, they grow, grow the raw materials, harvest them, and then clean them up. Most of our products are dried products. So they are mm -hmm. dehydrated, dehydrated at low nutrient, low um, temperatures to maintain yeah. the, the nutrients. So they are then dehydrated, then milk to powder. And then for the ones that are mixes, we have our, our standard recipes, like for our beverage powders and our seasoning powders. 
we have our standard recipes for mixing. Now, for the raw materials too, from time to time, we, we test, we, we have to take the raw materials to a food lab to test mm. to ensure that it is, it, to check the nutrient composition and also mm -hmm. ensure that it is free of um, microorganisms because you are, you, are, yeah. you, are, you are producing safe food. Then yeah. you also have to ensure that the production staff and all. So I, I would say a food, a food processing company is like a hospital. So when you mm. come to the factory, you, you'd see us wearing our overalls, wearing um, our head cover, our nose mask, hand gloves, because you're not supposed to have contact contact with the food so food safety is is very important so after we have the raw materials are fine and ready for um, packaging the ones that are like like dates for example dates now you package it directly a child will package it directly but things like the beverage and seasoning powders you have to mix them based on their standard recipes yeah yeah and then we package yeah. and seal and they are ready for Amazing, so amazing. After, so after, after it's checked, after the quality control checks are done as well. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so in terms of marketing, how has marketing been for you? And what are your plans for for reaching um, even more markets in, in the near future? Okay, um, we we've we've done most of our marketing on social media through our Instagram page. Yeah. With, um, yeah. We've been consistent with showing up and educating people every day beyond selling our product, beyond putting up our products for sale, and beyond also yeah. talking about our products. We talk about things generally related to the healthy lifestyle. So beyond making a profit, we are very passionate about helping people making to make healthy food choices, whether they buy our products or not. That's really the core. That's really the core of what we do: helping people to eat. Healthy. Healthy. Um, awesome. Yeah. So, so we also work with um, communities. Um, we sponsor nutrition programs, nutrition events, because most mm. of them have our our target market. We collaborate with a lot of um, let me say healthy lifestyle influencers to also mm. um, get our products across to their audience. And then when Absolutely. when you're when your product quality is good, people will always come back. That's the come truth. Back. Yeah. We, we try to ensure that we we run our business with integrity. So if we are saying it's free of sugar, it's free of this, it's hundred percent natural, there's no coloring. And people use it and say that okay, this thing is actually different from what I've tried before that wasn't good. Yeah. And they will they yeah. will always they will always come back. So we also do, um, we also run ads from time to time, even though we've not been doing that so much, but we plan to do that more often. Oh, then, okay. um, part of what I've been discussing with you, <laughs> um, we plan to start shooting videos. In fact, my, my major excuse for not shooting videos is that my kitchen is not fine. So, <laughs> so I've you, called you them, someone to... When you start no, the business, right? I've I've so called someone to put I've called someone okay. to put a wallpaper on our kitchen and we'll start shooting our videos before the end of September. Let me know <laughs> shooting that. So I plan to shoot because I see that when we post videos of even other people's videos of what they can make with our products, people buy more. And then video yeah. video marketing is really the in thing now. So we plan yeah, to do to do more videos and also have a YouTube channel where I'll be shooting shooting recipes because I have I have a lot of recipes. Anybody that knows me, most of my friends, whenever they need any recipe, it will be please send me this recipe. I have a lot of recipes, it. I have a lot of recipes. So I just need to we need to shoot more videos and then run ads on it to really amazing. Yeah, okay, so. so I think we have we have um, about five minutes more to go. I wish we had more time because I actually have. But then um, I'll just ask you a few more questions. You know, now okay. you've come a long way. Uh, you've come a really, really long way. But then, if you were to start all over again, I mean, start this yes. journey, this entrepreneurial journey all over again, what what's that one thing that you would do differently? Mm, I think I would um, I'll get my nap back earlier. I'll start my number mm -hmm. process earlier. 
Yeah, because okay. it's a lot of things are hinged on that NAVDAC now. There are so many things mm-hmm. that we want to do, but we have to get NAVDAC first. So I would prioritize getting a NAVDAC when I start, even mm-hmm. if I have to borrow to do it. Because mm-hmm. I was waiting till we had the funds. But even if I have to borrow to do it, I'll get my NAVDAC earlier than I will start another process earlier than when we earlier than you did. Okay, yes, awesome. So, so so far so good now. Um um having run this such a good race, who would you say has had the greatest impact, you know, on this entrepreneurial journey of yours so far? And why? The greatest impact. Yeah, the greatest um, possible impact. I think it's my husband. Oh. Because because without him and he's not <laughs> I'm not trying to be romantic, but the truth is the only reason why I'm able to put in all the money we make back into Agas Mm -hmm. and only take out salaries is because my husband was there to provide. That's Mm -hmm. the only reason. If my husband was like an irresponsible man or (laughs) or if if he didn't support my vision and dreams, as I'm making the business Mm -hmm. money, I have to survive now. I'll spend it. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So one way we've been able to do is by putting back everything we need. So it's it's really mm-hmm. my husband. And even on days when I'm frustrated and all, he's the one I go to rant to. Wow. So he has really been supportive. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So and then um, I also so... I'm also thank I also thank God for always giving me ideas because most of the, our, our products ideas they're always dancing in my head and i know that it's not wow. running it's the holy spirit that puts it there so inspires them amazing amazing yeah. amazing amazing so so it also means that you stay connected to the holy spirit for him to actually inspire sure. those things. awesome sure. awesome so that's another lesson i don't want us to miss out there okay so what would you say are the key traits that are required to succeed on this role you know of course because um I guess Osom is not doing well by chance, you know. There must be certain values, certain skills that you probably gonna, you know, learn. So what are the key, if you were to summarize into to two, basically, what are the key traits, key skills that are required to actually succeed running a business uh, like I guess Osom? Mm, I think, um, number one, you have to, um, you have to be vision, you have to be able to visualize so you have mm. to see um i think i wrote i wrote that down you have to see you have to have the right mindset the right mindset once your mindset is right there's something in the bible that says as far as you can see i've given on to you so once your mm. mindset is right you can actually you you have that possi- um, possibility mindset you you see regardless of what is going on you just choose to see only the positive side of it you are able to visualize to see okay this is where i'm going being a visionary and having the right mindset is one key trait the next key trait is delay you have to be able to you have to learn to delay gratification so you have to really cut just spend on what is really essential and don't spend your business money pay yourself a salary put in everything your business money back into the business to grow it Start small mm. and be patient. Be patient about growing. You cannot grow. You cannot grow. Um, you cannot grow in one day because a lot of people are carried away with the Instagram buzz of oh, make one million in thirty days. No, be patient. <laughs> Everything takes time. So be patient and put in the work mm. and just grow. So people come and oh, see Agaso some today. At this Agaso some tomorrow. This Agaso some. But we've been doing this thing for three years. We've not, um, mm-hmm. We have not arrived. We've not blown no. But at least we've made some progress. We've been doing this thing for three years. So you that are just starting, sit down and also put in your own work and give your business time to grow. And Amazing. then also stay connected to God. That's... Okay, so um, I'll ask you a final question before we... That was very profound. I mean, um, just like was, um, many of our, our listeners are saying. But I would, I would just like to ask you this final question. Um, in your opinion, of course... As an entrepreneur, what would you say are the two? If you were to start a new business right now, you know what would you say are the yes. two on top creative business opportunities in Africa right now that are out right now? If you had money and you had to start another business, what would they be? <laughs> um, I think um, cold pressed oils, cold mm. pressed oils like um, oils like um, 
flaxseed oil, moringa oil, baobab oil, and all. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any company that is really doing that as the only business they do. Cold pressed oils mm-hmm. because they have a lot of um, health benefits and um, something in the IT space. Okay. Something in the tech awesome. space. Yeah, something in the tech space. Awesome. Thank you so very much, um, Ibube. Uh, we have 15 seconds to go. It was amazing talking to you. Um, I personally have learned Thank so you. much. Thanks for the amazing work that you do. Thank you guys for listening. I'll see you guys next week. Um, Thank you, everyone, for joining.